While the board has been cooling, I've taken some medium and started another little tin here and have put in some powdered yellow ochre. And I'm going to build up a little bit outer layer with this. And we'll see how that looks. Woo! I'm going to put in a little more medium. That color is kind of intense. And then when I'm done with them, I just leave these colors in the tins. They get hard, and then next time I need them, set them on the palette, and they get soft. Okay, I've used some medium to just thin out this a little bit. I don't need a real vibrant color. I want it to look a little, a little more transparent. It's building up a nice texture, but it will be important to make sure it's fused, because as the wax builds up, if it isn't well fused to the layer below it, it will be quite prone to It'll be more prone to chipping off, although it can chip off at any time if it's really smacked. But the more you fuse it, the better that can be to prevent that. And it's always a good idea to not expose an encaustic to temperatures that are terribly hot like leaving it in a hot car, or on a wall in a hot sun, or to really cold temperatures. The wax can freeze and is more susceptible to cracking. Okay, while the board was cooling, I went in with some more color, a little more of the ochre, and yellow, I added a little Prussian blue to jazz up some of the contrast and touched up some areas. And I'm sort of going to give this a final fusing. It's going to bleed a little bit, but I think that's all going to add to it looking like some celestial some celestial body. I like the texture. I'm liking the colors. I can't promise I won't go back and still tweak with the color a little more because that's something I do a lot of. But this shows you the basic technique of encaustic. You have a support, you prime it and fuse it, then you add layers of color. Each layer you fuse to the layer below. And then when you are finally done, you need to fuse the top layer. And that completes it. So this is what I've ended up with, and I'm rather liking it. So now that we've looked at some of the basic techniques of encaustic, I'd like to show just a few more things that you can do with wax, such as inscribing or embedding images.